Hey students, welcome back. This is going to be 3.3 video, but we're going to start with a 3.2 review video first. So your job here is to draw the Bohr model and make sure you indicate valence electrons for the following elements. We've got helium and we've got sodium. Hit pause, draw your pictures, meet me down below. Okay, here we are, 3.3. This is Lewis Dot and Charge. All right, this is page 19. So we're going to actually expand upon our Bohr models and take it to the Lewis charge. Remember, our end goal on this is trying to get to compounds. So we've got a little bit more to go before we get there. So here we go, jumping right in. We're going to hit some vocab right away. So we've got Lewis dot diagrams. And so this is very, very simple. Make this a little bigger. Uh, the dots represent valence electrons. And remember our valence electrons are those electrons in the outer energy um, level. So they're the ones that are involved in bonding, which is what we're most interested with right now. And remember our valence electrons, hey, look at that. There it is right there. So these are our outer energy electrons. They are involved in bonding. And all elements are trying to get to what is called the octet rule. Okay, all but two elements are trying to get to the octet rule. And that means they are trying to get eight electrons in their valence shell. So in their outer shell, they are trying to have basically a full shell. All right. The only two electrons that do not follow the octet rule are hydrogen and helium. These guys follow the duet rule, which means only two electrons in their valence shell because let's be real, uh, they can only fit two. The first energy level only holds two. All right. Charge of an atom shows how many electrons are lost or gained. Okay, I got a little rough on that writing there. Hopefully everybody can see that. How many electrons are lost or gained by an atom? And so when a substance loses electrons, it becomes a cation because it's positively charged. Right, And this is where it gets a little weird. It's not technically weird if we think of that in terms of charge. If we're losing negative charges, it's going to be become positive, right? Um, then we have our anion, which gains electrons. That is not how you spell gains, all right? Gains electrons, all right? And that is our negatively charged, all right? They become negatively charged because we are adding negative charges, so very simply, here we go. How to write Lewis dot diagrams and find charges. The first thing that we're going to do is we find our number of valence electrons. We can either do that right now by the Bohr diagram or our electron config. I'll kind of do both uh, to show you what that would look like. And then we're going to place dots around the symbol to illustrate the valence electrons. There is never, ever going to be more than eight. If you get more than eight, you've done it wrong. Okay. Then we decide if it'll be easier to get to, how do we get to eight electrons? This is the charge part, all right? This right here, D, is the charge part. How would it be easiest to get to eight electrons? Would it be easiest to lose electrons or gain electrons, all right? If they lose electrons, it makes it positive, and remember, that's our cation. If it gains electrons, that's our anion. Okay, and then our noble gases will not gain or lose because they have a full valent shell. Okay, so let's see if we can't kind of do this. I'll make this just a little bit like this. So we've got oxygen, and our first step is to find the valence electrons. So we can do that by either the Bohr diagram or the electron configuration. Well, let's start with the Bohr diagram, and then we'll kind of work to our uh, electron configuration. So if we do it this way, we have eight protons, eight neutrons, right? Because oxygen is 16. All right. That means we have eight electrons. So we have two in this first energy level. And then that second energy level can hold up to eight, but it only really needs to hold how many? Uh, six to get to eight, right? Two, four, six, eight. We have eight electrons. So these are our valence, right? Kind of reviewing what we did yesterday. And now we're supposed to figure out what is its charge. Well, excuse me. We're supposed to do our 
Lewis dots. So we pick O. That's our um, symbol. We've got O. And then we're going to put six dots around it. How we fill the dots is somewhat important. I'm going to be a little bit lenient on this. But we go top, bottom, side to side. Because remember, electrons repel each other, right? So that's why they stay. And then we go back and double up. So that would be two, four, six. That's our six electrons. So now if we look at this, would oxygen most likely gain two electrons, making it negative two, or would it lose six, becoming positive six? Hmm. That's right. It's going to gain two, which makes it negative two. So it's most likely charge is negative two. All right. Now, uh, let's take a look at sodium here. Kind of the same thing. Uh, we can do this time, let's do our electron dot, right? Or excuse me, electron configuration. So sodium, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. That's our electron configuration. If you did shorthand on that, that would be totally fine. You said NE with brackets and then 3s1. But either way, it still works. How many valence electrons are there? Well, big three here is the only one, right? So there's only one valence electron. So we're going to put Na with a dot, and that's what we've got. Mm, all right, so Na has a choice. It can lose one, becoming positive one, or it could gain seven and become negative seven, which would be easiest. That's right, losing one. So its probable charge is plus one. Awesome. Hope to see you on the next one.